This Chop and Brew Kvike Connection video is brought to you with support from Imperial Yeast. Their Kvyking Kvike Blend Summer Seasonal Release is available throughout the month of August at your homebrew supplier. What's going on everybody? Welcome to Chop and Brew. Another Kvike Connection video featuring Joel, Badass Brian Adams, and Chip Walton. What we have before us is a flight of homebrewed beers. Two from BA, one from Joel, and one from Brian Huntley of short-circuited brewers. Um, he sent us one as well as a little gifty pitch of Kvike. We'll talk about that in a minute. We should um, taste that. You want to just take it to the dome? Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll consider that. <laughs> so let's just get into it. Um, what's also happening is we're recording this Chop and Brew video off to the side. we got a live stream going for our crew of Chop and Brew Facebook page that's kind of Patreon only. So we might be kind of like cutting back and forth, but you want to start with Brian? Start with the guest beer? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Why don't you pop and pour, hey girl, and um, I'll explain the beer. So it's a 10-gallon batch. Um, Brian got a dried Kvike from David Heath, another awesome YouTuber. I'll link both of their channels below. David Heath sent it um, from Norway. He got it from a farmer who's had it for generations. Uh, I believe it's considered the Ebegarden, Ebegarden uh, Kvike. It was a uh, 50, basically almost half and half Viking Pale Ale and Viking Pills, mashed at 145, boiled, um, one ounce of Warrior at 60 minutes, so 25 IBUs. OG is 1045, FG is 1008. Um, he said because he fermented it wow. at like 65 to 68. It took oh, interesting. Uh, five to six days to finish, then he mm -hmm. let it settle for five more, so mm -hmm. at 10 day beer versus some of the ones that you hear in 80 and 90 degrees where it's like mm -hmm. two Ooh. days and out. Yep. That's tasty. I mean, even so, it's interesting comparing, because mine, which we'll get to later, I guess, was fermented much more on the high end. Like, yeah. I fermented that at, like, yeah. 97 degrees. Yeah. I think so, that, this will probably be our lowest temp it, it, yeah. version. And it, it shows it. It kind of tastes yeah, like a beer. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more restrained. It's I, yeah. Yeah. A lot of pills comes through. You know, that's my it favorite. It tastes very lagery. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of that mm -hmm. graininess. Yeah, a little bit of that hay boring. kind mm -hmm. of like coming in. But yeah, there's nothing that jumps mm -hmm. out as far as like citrusy yeah. or kind of un, mm -hmm. un, un, unexplainable. Yeah. Even though it took me a minute to say unexplainable. <laughs> say it again. Yeah, it's really nice. It's, it has kind of a brighter flavor to it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's just a really clean mm -hmm. beer. I, I would drink a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. So which goes to say that I think Kvike doesn't necessarily have to go into something that you plan to be wacky, mm -hmm. weird, or really um, over-utilizing that yeah, character, right? Totally. It, again, it is a fermenter. Mm -hmm. It can just ferment. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it doesn't have to be the weird kid in the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's solid. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a, and fermenting at that temperature, you could like, you know, substitute it for other yeasts pretty easily. Like, it's not, because, <laughs> yeah, again, with mine fermenting it that warm, it's like it kind of turned it into something else. Like, it was a wit beer, but now it's completely its own thing. But this, I think, could sub in pretty yeah. pretty easily. Yeah, thanks, Brian, for sending yep. it. Thanks for the Very backstory. Good. Thanks, David Heath. So cool, the, the, the Kvike connection of all of this is just mm -hmm. like the transatlantic exchange of, you know, well, not exchange. Like, they send us Kvike, and we send them videos. Of <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one day we'll send them something in return. Some, some beer? Some McDonald's chicken oh, McNuggets wow. or something. That's some apple pie. Oh, one thing I meant to mention earlier when we were drinking Brian's is Brian was awesome enough to make and send me this shirt a while back. I sent you that? Stranger Brewing. Brian Huntley oh. of Short Circuited <laughs> Brewers. So shout out to Brian for that. That combines two <laughs> awesome things, Stranger Things and Home Brewing. And the, very fitting for this table at the moment. <laughs> Up next, let's do Joel's. Let's do Joel's. Sure. Got it. What did Joel bring? Tell us about it, and I'll pour it up. Um, so I wanted to do a wit beer this summer, and my house is really freaking hot. <laughs> and so, um, oh, and I've been yeah, sorry. It's poured to the up. poured to the rim, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and you didn't um, spill anything. So yeah, the I'm a pro. The recipe is just uh, brewing classic styles wit beer, um, just with the difference being that I fermented it on Kvike, um with the uh, Imperial Kvyking and okay. uh, fermented it at 97 degrees 
and it was bubbling after like an hour <laughs> or two, like just direct pitch, no starter, um, just ripped right through it, and got a lot of tropical yeah, notes, do. I think, from it. I, I got a lot of like pineapple, guava sort of things going on. I, I have actually been enjoying putting like a squeeze of lime juice in it when I'm at home. Mm. Wow. Yeah, you can really get that kvike fruitiness mm -hmm. in this one. Yeah. The nose is bready and doughy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless Do you still get the other Whitbeer editions, so like with the orange peel and the coriander? Coriander. Yeah. I picked up on that coriander. Yeah, I think it's balanced. I was worried putting that stuff in that it would be overstated. I haven't done a whip before. So, so you didn't up the coriander or anything? Just nope. thinking it would get nope, overpowered? Just did it, it exactly as, as in the recipe. A little bit of chamomile in there, too. Oh, okay. There's something like extremely floral and then bordering on like a warming spice, like a mm -hmm. cinnamon, like yeah. a woody spice in there. Uh, have you brewed that recipe before to nope. know? Okay. Nope, first time. <laughs> so there's, there's no A-B test? No. <laughs> what was the ABV? Um, God, what was it? I'm pretty sure it's like 5.6. Um, my efficiency was a little bit high on it, um, and I think the finishing gravity was like... 110, so pretty standard. How many days in did you consider it done, did you say? Two or three? Yeah, like as far as FG. four, yeah. I mean, I, and I wasn't checking it religiously. I had a busy week, but I think it was like the weekend after I brewed it. So like a week later, I was like, yep, it's done. I get a lot of that fruit, guava for sure. Um, almost mm -hmm. a little like kind of like shortbread -y, like mm -hmm. because it's a wit that mm -hmm. has some wheat. A lot of wheat, yeah. Okay, it's almost get... half wheat. Um, it's oh, got okay. some oats in there too. Okay. Um, oh. Yeah, tons of wheat. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of that kind yep. of body, mm -hmm. that cakey, without being like mm -hmm. a hazy bomb. Yeah, it's, it's it really got a lot of body. It cleared nice. up. I mean, I did a protein rest on it. I guess that must have just really helped a lot. But mm. it was, it was a smooth brew day. Oh. That's cool. I mean, it tastes mm -hmm. just enough, not like. A wit beer that yeah. you can see what the what mm -hmm. the Kvike's doing. Oh yeah, it's especially that one's a blend, and I don't think we really know what the blend is of. Yeah, but it did completely transform it. I mean, the recipe yeah. I would rely on to be a very like middle of the road right. standard wit beer, but it, it definitely classic style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can brew. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> but it just it turned it into something completely different. That's and good. I, I like that. Do you want to try this sauce? I think you would actually really like this. I like the finish too. It also gets the angel share. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's balanced. I mean, it, initially I was kind of almost taken aback by how fruity and tropical it was. Um, I don't always go for that, but well, it's, you, uh, it's a nice kind of summer ale, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always think when they're fruity, they're going to finish sweet. Mm -hmm. So I like that this one dries out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, wood beer can often carry some of that like Belgian-y, clovey thing mm. over that yeah. you know, can be too much of this kind of does something similar but without having that. It totally. adds a little plus one yeah. to the wit beer. Well, that's probably what I would have ended up with if I tried doing a standard one anyway because it would have been so hot it would have tasted like a mess. So Number three! Boom, number three. This one, oh, I can I pour did. while I didn't you label bottles. It's hard so to we, talk. We got to taste it first. It's even, oh. uh, you didn't label no, the No, I forgot. I ran out of the house before I could <laughs> label it. Can you tell it's by either, this looks like the no, no, no. Yeah, because that dark color. Yeah, the Centennial. Yeah. Yeah. Cups on. So this is our collaborative kit yep. with F.H. Steinbart, the Centennial Ale that we came up with for their 100th anniversary last year. That's right. And it's, uh, I can't remember the malt bill. ESB malt? ESB malt. And uh, a little victory, victory. Some Crystal 15. Um, Centennial. Centennial and Cluster. Cluster. Yep. This was after we fell in love with Cluster, after the 311 brew that Paul mm. Hill and I did. We decided, like, that's what we wanted to do for this kind of, like, OG hop mm. kit from Portland, Oregon. And this is, so, I don't know what strain that is. That's the I've Otter, Otterdale, Otterdale. Otterdale. I'm not Otterdale. sure how to, uh -huh. Ivar told me how to say it and I already forgot. Let's see what he says, because he's, he's watching. Ivar, well, he's told me, he's phonetically spelled it and he's, let's not spend time on that. That's right. Because that's not, chime that's in not a enthralling video. <laughs> so in its pure form, this tastes very much kind of like an old school pale. Yeah. It's centennial. It's mm -hmm. cluster. Mm -hmm. It's we went for like a really lightish malt bill, fifteen mm -hmm. L, you know, crystal. Yep. What this one fermented at ninety seven. Ninety seven. Put it in the wow. sous vide, cranked yeah. it up. It's got out of all three samples so far, this one's got like something. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like frenetic about it, almost. 
I can't tell. It's like smoky and almost like sulfury. Right. It's yeah, changed since last way. week. Not in a bad way. Necessarily, yeah, but no, it's got, I, I like it. It smells kind of like, like fireworks that you put out yeah. in like a bucket of water. And this has changed since last week, last Saturday. Yeah, last Saturday it tasted way more way like a fruity. hazy IPA yep. almost. So I don't know. Mm. I really it's like weird. that. Yeah, it had a lot more fruit last, last Saturday. This, like, it was zap very... of tartness all of a mm -hmm. sudden. We're not. And it was very fresh that uh, mm. Saturday. So it, mm -hmm. it fermented. That's so uh, I had a hard time getting this to yeah. get, ooh, get going. <laughs> so Yeah, explain that. You talked about that a little. Yeah, I just made a starter because I didn't know what to do. If I could pitch just the raw, dried yeast here. So I put it in a, um, some wort on stir plate, warmed it up a little bit. Let it go, and it took about 36 hours before it went. And as soon as I saw it bubble, I threw it in the carboy and um, turned on the sous vide, kept it hot, and maybe 36 hours it was done. No kidding. It dropped from 10.50 to 10.10. Wow. Dono had yeah. the same issue with crazy. this one having a little more lag time than mm -hmm. some of the ones that we've heard about. Right. Yeah, so it was. I didn't do a, a cold crash. No, this is the Sigmund. My bad. Oh, this Sigmund? is the Sigmund. Okay. I was like, that doesn't feel right as I'm saying it. Cold crashed it for two days and it was on tap. Mm. Yeah, so it, maybe it's going to change more. I would definitely say this one speaks to that kind of alive yeah. nature. Because mm -hmm. this does taste it does. very different than a week ago. Yep. So where's that haze coming from then, even after cold crashing it and all that? I don't know. Yeah. Magic. Yeah, it's just peppery and it's funky. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it went from like a hazy IPA with like these pillowy, <laughs> big hops yeah. kind of flavor. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think that speaks to even kegged and carbonated. Mm -hmm. It can still change. Yeah. But like we noted when we were drinking these bottles from the last video, um, damn, the one from Norway is definitely changing. Yeah. I wonder. Granted, it's not even carbonated. Mm -hmm. It's not kegged. It's kind of living in its... I wonder, still environment. I wonder if it's got a, a low end temp for fermenting. You know, it's going to keep fermenting in the fridge. It's 45 degrees. Oh, maybe. Dang. Oh. Because yeah. it's, it's so different. I mean, I like it still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of like it more than... What it was now that we've had it and we're swirling it, it's lost some of that sulfuriness, which mm -hmm. is good. Because yeah. that was off-putting, to be honest. Like, the first mm -hmm. couple's like, mm -hmm. well, we're going to have to fake our way through this for Brian's yeah, ego. <laughs> Dang, I hurt my ego. No, I dig it. I just drink by myself. You know what? That fruit is coming back. As it warms up, I'm getting a little blast mm -hmm. of fruit at the it's very end. It's coming back around again. This is for the fruitness of the beer. Coming back around again. <laughs> 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 Yeah, peach. I get a lot of like the apricot stone fruits from this now. Mm -hmm. Which I'm is seeing different. all these people yeah. pulling up for the garage sale. I'm like, do they know that we're drinking beer because of Facebook? <laughs> they can't have any. Bottom line, I think Vike makes stuff change a little yeah. bit while it's in. Um, and yeah, if you get sulfur in your first mm -hmm. pour of some homebrew, like give it a swirl. Yeah. Force it out. Because it definitely mm -hmm. is not in there. Now it's just like the foam, mm -hmm. the white pepper almost. Yeah. And a little tartness. Well, I'm glad they were tasting the different Kvike strains. Like we're not just doing all, all one of them. Because mm -hmm. like clearly there's some vastly different characters. Yeah. And strange, Ivar strange. was talking about how it's Ivar. different. Ivar. Sorry. Sorry, Ivar. Oh, wait, you're up there. Sorry, bro. <laughs> uh, how each region has their own strain. Yeah. Or even town, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think each house. I think each that's house. kind of the point. It's almost like a sourdough starter if mm -hmm. you had it at your house in Brooklyn Park mm -hmm. or versus mine here versus even like Chris England's on the other side of Midway. Like, who mm -hmm. knows what's going on. All right, number four. Another BA joint. This is this is a spotted cow clone <laughs> with two row Pilsner flaked corn flaked raw, uh, raw barley crystal twenty a little bit of Munich and I used uh, Equinot 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 and which which Kvike? Same one. So have you brewed this before just as like a no. pure spotted cow clone? No. Does that one change too? When did it ferment? I didn't taste this last weekend. How hot did this ferment? Same time, 97 degrees. This tastes less like it fermented that high. Like that mm -hmm. other one, I attribute some of like, whoa, mm -hmm. the pizzazz and the zip to it yeah. for that higher temperature. But this one, holy hops. Hops are coming out more. Yep. Which is weird because like Spotted Cow's not that hoppy of a beer. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's like the, it's the bitterness yeah. specifically. Yeah. Do we have the beer switched? That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> I told you I didn't label it. It might be. I think they're switched. Son this tastes this tastes more like the Centennial. <laughs> we can't do anything right, folks. So you think oh, this? Shit. I would. I would be. I would venture to say that as well. <laughs> All right, let me, let me look at this one again. So this is some real time. <laughs> wow. You can't edit this crap down. So we think now this is the F8 Steinbart with the Centennial and the yes. Cluster. It's because Brian didn't label when I left. <laughs> so that is to okay. say, our impression of the Spotted Cow Clone with Kvike was that it kind of like had this weird zip, almost electric kind of firework flare when we opened yeah, it, but then it faded out to apricot. And it makes more sense because yeah. I feel like the fruit is way more forward mm -hmm. in that, which the malt bill and hot bill would allow for. Because that could be that flake bar that's yeah. in there. This tastes like... I, and I yeah. thought that this looked a little dark for a spotted cow clone. This right. one makes a lot more sense for that. For the record, well, there we go. Elsa's off camera shaking her head at some knuckleheads. And, you know, <laughs> you know so how this we one do. we get more of the hop. Yeah. That lemony hop cluster is very kind of lemony, um, citrus. Mm -hmm. Centennial is obviously like citrus mm -hmm. and a little pine. And that could that would explain the at least two ounces of well four ounces in there. Yeah. yeah. And this tastes really mm -hmm. good. Yeah. And hoppy. I will say last weekend. It also came off a little more like full bodied, yeah. mm -hmm. and now it's coming off a little drier, a little tart around the edges. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like like a hoppy saison, mm -hmm. almost kind of yeah, going on. Totally. You did yeah. that on purpose. What? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mixed them up? Yeah. Not really. Mm -hmm. I just didn't label. Mm. Yeah, that would that explains a lot. But needless to say, yeah. Kvike does a good job. Definitely. Yeah, they were both a lot more sweeter last week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or a lot more fruity. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, so what are your I mean, takeaways in general for, well, with brewing with this stuff? I mean, it's nice to have another option. Like, I, for the past few summers with, like, my summer home brewing, it's just been saisons. A lot of saisons because my house is too hot and I don't have a fermentation fridge. And clearly, like, this is, like, a whole nother family of... of you know, yeast that I can use that, that all like give it a really different quality. Um, and so. you don't feel, do you feel still pigeonholed to some degree though, based mm. on style or have we proven no. here that well, I mean, this uh, one was at 65 degrees. Yeah. So. I mean, you're, you, I feel like it's always going to be like a riff on a style. Like with this one, it, you know, it was a wit, you know, and I going into it, knowing that I was putting Kvike in it, I was like expecting, I'm like, it's, it's going to have some differences. It's not just going to be a pure wit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, that's kind of part of why I like to homebrew is to like throw some weird shit together and yeah. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but I wonder what the coldest potential fermenting strain is. Like right. yeah. if there's ones that will lager almost. Or is there one that's higher than this? I mean, like, right. I don't... Could like, 97 is just, like... I mean, even compared to Saison, it's, like, a whole other level on top of mm -hmm. that, so... I wasn't sure if it would even work. Yeah. You know, it said... Mm -hmm. uh, Evar said to pitch it, went at 100, and, like, what? <laughs> no, I'm gonna let it come down. Yeah. <laughs> I was scared I'd kill off the yeast. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just put that sous vide up to uh, 97 and let it ride, and yeah. it was going. I mean, next next time I brew with like I, I'm probably not gonna like push it up to that top limit. Um, but with it being my first Kvike brew, I wanted to kind of test its limits a little bit and just kind of see what that's all about. Word. Well, we're going to Norway in September. And we're gonna hook up with Ivar, and he's gonna show us the old school, traditional way of brewing um, and big old cauldrons, wood fired, awesome. um, boil. That's going to be nuts. We're going to scream as we pitch the dried Kvike in. And, uh, so if you want to throw in on that effort, there's a link below to help us kind of make sure we get everything we need while we're in Norway. Kvike, once again, uh, Imperial Yeast Kviking strain is available through August at your homebrew supplier. You can probably find some dried goodies if you search around the forums enough. Definitely worth the try, I think even outside of summer, but definitely right okay. now, like you said, because you can just ambiently let it ride in almost any yep. situation. Yeah, for about mm -hmm. two more weeks. Here. And then winter's coming. Yeah. Uh-oh, battery's coming. Battery. <laughs> uh -oh. Battery? Oh! 
Uh-oh. No card. All right. Card. We wrapped it up perfectly. All right. Yeah. Chop for chop. Go like. Fuck a like. Brew for brew. Oh. Hey, y'all ain't got nothing oh. in your cups. Oh. I got water. Give me some of that. Give me one Give me your cup, <laughs> kid. <laughs> Give me your lunch money, sucker. <laughs> Why do you take my cup? Mm. What that one taste like? Bomb guava. You put some on some ice cream. Baby, I really wanna know. I think you should stop your crying. Brian Adams, don't be so sad. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>